How's it going everyone? I'm Doom Wizard, and I'm back. In this video, I'm going to read an article written by our friends over at CNBC. In it, they outline the business strategy in coping with population increase and the green transition. So, without further delay, let's see what they have planned for us. The title is Massive city growth and climate change are twin opportunities, says manager of a $40 billion fund. Published Thursday, May 11th, the key points from the top, and again, I'm going to try my hardest not to laugh. The population of city dwellers is expected to double by 2050, the World Bank says. To accommodate that influx of city dwellers, the world will have to add an equivalent of an entire New York City to the world every month for 40 years. The biggest wave of building growth in human history. As the globe works to decarbonize, that growth also represents a massive opportunity for investors, says Sadiq Waba, a founder of the chairman of the I Squared Capital, a global infrastructure management company that manages around 40 billion dollars worth of investments straight from the top <clears throat> i'm gonna i'm gonna struggle to maintain my composure here but i'm gonna do it for you okay for us the next few decades are critical for humanity to respond to climate change they're also going to see a massive trend of building and urbanization as millions of people move to cities the confluence of these two massive global trends holds countless climate challenges and similarly expansive opportunities for investors, says Sadiq Waba. Quote, investing in infrastructure, climate-related technology is the future, he told CNBC in an interview in May. Currently, 56% of the global population lives in cities, according to the World Bank. That's about 4.4 billion people. The population of city dwellers is expected to double by 2050, the World Bank says, at which point 70% of people will live in cities, the World Bank says. The biggest growth in urbanization will happen in India, more broadly speaking, Asia. So as people move, quote, you have to build bigger and bigger cities to accommodate those cities are made of concrete, they're made of steel, they require air conditioning, they require heating, they require electricity, they require a broadband connection, they require cybersecurity, they require a whole gamut of things, they require transport, but that requires an enormous amount of infrastructure with a major impact on climate. Architectural think tank Architecture 2030 projects that 2.6 trillion square feet of new floor area will be added to buildings by 2060. That's the equivalent of adding an entire New York City's worth of building to the world every month for 40 years, the biggest wave of building growth in human history. As this massive growth happens, all kinds of new decarbonation challenges will arise. For example, the growth of electric vehicle sales has been increasing every year for the last decade, According to the IEA, EVs do not use gas, a fossil fuel product, which is climate positive. Quote, they still have to run on roads. The road is made of bitumen, a derivative of oil product, Waba told CNBC. So if you build cities, we may have electric vehicles that don't pollute. But the roads themselves coming from oil derivatives, which of course is polluting. The batteries for those electric vehicles are often made with lithium, which has to be mined, transported, and processed. Each stage of that process poses an infrastructure climate problem. Quote, transporting it through ports, through container ships, bulk ships that use diesel. Have we thought about that? It arrives at the port of New York or port of LA, needs to be processed. Lithium will have to be transported in trucks that use diesel. Have we thought about that? To decarbonize as the pace of urbanization accelerates will require the solutions are not only clean, but also cheaper. Developing countries with large portions of their populations facing food insecurity and hunger are not going to pay for more expensive, climate-friendly solutions, Waba says. That will require technological innovation. It is possible to accelerate the pace of innovation when there is the political and cultural will. Quote, my aunt is at NIH. She's a vaccinologist. 
she was a vaccinologist for 40 years and said that it will take at least two years on the fastest track you could think. It took nine months. That is because we were able to pull the full resources and the attention of all of our top scientists. Quote, Waba said, the same kind of collective effort and money has to go towards combating climate change. Waba, who is a member of the President Biden's National Infrastructure Adver Advisory Council, generally praised the Biden administration for its investment in climate solutions. He says the administration's climate efforts have been honestly, quote, underappreciated. The money going towards climate mitigation efforts is fundamentally transformative for the economy, Waba said. But he said there's not enough money from the federal government going towards research and development. Investors also undermine the size of the opportunity. Global investments in energy transition technologies reached a record $1.3 trillion in 2022, but annual investments have up have to more than quadruple to more than $5 trillion. If the world aims to stay on a pathway of minimizing global warming to 1.5. These are very, very attractive returns, Waba told CNBC. It's not just producing wind and solar, it's entire cities that will need to be developed and reformulated and thought again, and that can only happen with the use of technology. Of course, some climate investments are risky. For example, if infusion could make you unfathomably wealthy or can lose every of your last penny. But there are safer investments still that have strong potential for investors. Quote, the technology that allows you to charge, put electricity in your house, sell it on the grill, grid, that technology exists. That technology can make four times. We can go back through, that's the end of the article, we can go back through and dissect this one by one, but this is another one of those um, techno-optimists who thinks that we can out-technology our way out of the predicament, and also that uh, electric cars, roads, and all of the things that require, that enable habitat for humans, including food, um, is completely separate from the environment. I mean, that's the point I'm getting despite him saying to the contrary. Uh, he's saying two different things here. And if you haven't vomited in your mouth already yet, I applaud you. You made it through. This is what CNBC has in store for us. And the World Bank. Well, I had to read that. Hope you got the message. I'll talk to you later. See ya.